Well, it's a, that's a, that's actually an interesting question. The first of all, money is uh, prior to money. Uh, it's going to sound like a long answer, but I'm, I'm not quite sure I know the nature of your question. But let me see how I can handle it. Prior, thank you. Prior to uh, prior to money, essentially trade. Um, so isn't it a little bit fraudulent though if I were to walk into a bank and they give me a receipt that I can redeem at any time, but it's only noticed that it, it, it would be called fraud if everyone came to the bank and requested their money? Oh, I'm going to answer your question, but then I want to go back to mine. Because okay, okay. it really is. This is the huge change okay. of the last five years. It's not fraudulent. It's not fraudulent. Um, because everybody understands it, but it is not. Not no one really understands. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, those who those who th those who know about it, it knew about it, so it was not fraudulent. I I I talked to the like teachers and, and, and MPs even MPPs, and they, they had no idea that uh, that there was only four billion dollars in the vaults, but over a trillion dollars was lent out. Yeah, okay, so let me go back. Well, the fact that they didn't know it. They should have. I mean, but no, but but really, no one does. Well, they quickly. I, should should that be involved a little bit more before we start using money? That we should be told where it is, where it comes from. Well, no, there was no fraud. People should have known. And but there really is a problem, and that is that the people who knew didn't stop it. But I want to go back to the, 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 the real thing because this, yeah. this is really the gen. You had asked the question at the very beginning about the financial crisis that we're in. Oh, well, it was just where does money come from? I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah, this. No, but wait, 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 but it's really important to understand what happened that me, normally a very staid banker, will lend you the money to buy a home that you don't think. Well, 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 first of all, is, is it actually money that they're lending people? Oh, yeah, they're lending, they're lending money. Is it, is it actual money or is it... It's real money. It's not a receipt to present money? No, it's real money. Isn't there a difference between bank credit? Well, the, yes, there is, but, but let's go back to it. Don't change the subject. Okay. Um, but no, but wait a minute. Unless you want to get... To, you're asking me what was the cause of the current crisis. Well, well no, like, I, I just want to know where money comes from. Well, let me tell you something. Let, let me just take it one step further, despite the fact that's not where you want to go. With would uh, a debt-free money system be good for the country or no? No. No, it would it, it, it's, it would I had read that somewhere in the Bank Act of Canada that it was allowed that somewhere between 1990 and 1991 that reserve requirements for banks would be phased out in the next few months. I tightened them up. So so they, they have returned to... I tightened them up. They were, they were, they were they were eased up, uh, conservatives eased them up in 90 or 91, yeah. and I tightened them up in 95. So what, what did you make them, what, what is the, the you what, said what between... They, what they are now, what they are now, it's roughly, roughly 7 to 1. Roughly 7 to 1. But I want to go back to the main question. Maybe he means he tightened it up so much that it slipped right through his fingers back into legislation. Because although there are other complex regulations, that banks still have to meet, our government has given private companies the authority to break the law, which in turn is bankrupting the people and the government itself. Does the, does the Prime Minister or President of either Canada or America have the ability to create debt-free money? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Because um, I, I, I was reading a quote which by... Which kind of asked the question, why, can't, why don't they? Why don't they, right. Why don't they? Because it's inflationary. Because well, it drives it can drive inflation through the roof. How how's that? Well <laughs> here are the glass here are my glasses. It's the only pair of glasses in the world. Okay? And um, I uh, I'm gonna sell them for a dollar, right? And you have a dollar and you don't have any money at all. Or no, you have ten dollars and you don't have any money at all. These glasses are on sale for a dollar. So, 
you come to both come to see me and you want to buy the closet. I say, okay, fine. I'm, how much will you pay me? And you say, I can't pay any. I don't have any money. So I turn to you and you say, well, fine. I'm the only buyer. I'll pay you a dollar, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's say the glasses are on sale for a dollar today and you both have ten dollars, right? So you come to me and you say, and you both desperately want my glasses. So you say to me, uh, I'll give you a dollar. And I say, well, okay, they're worth for sale for a dollar, but what will you give me? What are you going to say to me? Two. You're going to say two dollars. Two dollars. Sure. Okay. All of a sudden, these glasses, which were worth one dollar, are now worth two dollars. That's inflation. Mm -hmm. And that's inflation. The more money there is in supply, the danger there is there's going to be inflation. That's why everybody says what's happening now as a result of what's going on in the United States is that five years from now we're going to have massive inflation. So, so it, is, it is the amount of money in circulation that causes inflation, not who distributes the money, right? It's largely the amount of money in circulation. Well, it, yeah, there are a lot of reasons. But it's, yes, that drives up the price. That drives up prices because more people can afford to buy something. Okay, I'm going to replay the last few seconds of that. Remember, he began saying that it was borrowing money from the Bank of Canada that would cause inflation. The more money there is in supply, the danger there is there's going to be inflation. That's why everybody says what's happening now as a result of what's going on in the United States is that five years from now we're going to have massive inflation. So, so it, is, it is the amount of money in circulation that causes inflation, not who distributes the money, right? It's largely the amount of money in circulation. Well, it, yeah, there are a lot of reasons, but it's yes, that drives up the price. That drives up prices because more people can afford to buy something. I think what he's trying to say is now that he's allowed the private banks to make up this magical money that keeps growing in their favor, the government shouldn't borrow money from the Bank of Canada since they would have to create new numbers that don't already exist. But if the Bank of Canada had just been doing its job from the start, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. Do you see how absurd it is to say that the Bank of Canada causes inflation? Besides, since 95% of money is created by private banks, they're the cause of 95% of inflation. Because of the decisions made by prime ministers like Paul Martin, this is how money in Canada sadly works. There was no fraud. People should have known. And, but there really is a problem. And that is that the people who knew didn't stop it. 